Hey folks, Bo Cephas here. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back. So, Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider Definif Definitive Edition. I had in my library for 10 years and finally decided to finish it. I saw the news about uh, the unified Laura Croft, so I figured I would finally finish this game. It's one of the first few games I bought when I originally bought my PlayStation when they rolled out all those years ago. Uh, so I decided to finish it when I upgraded to the PlayStation 5 in anticipation of Stellar Blade. Now it's been a few days since I finished and here is my opinion and brief assessment. We'll start off with some things I liked. Visually, the island was beautiful. I got no complaints on how the game actually looked, especially for, you know, it being as old as it, as it is. I think the graphics and everything st stood up rather well over time, as well as the character models. I thought the character models were decent. Uh, Laura, Laura is still feminine, uh, younger. But uh, at least she still looks like a woman, <laughs> which is, you can't say many of our favorite female characters do anymore, but uh, at least they got that. Um, she may not be, you know, like the past Laura, but like I said, at least she still looks like a woman. Uh, the gameplay, it played like Uncharted. I had, I had finished Uncharted years ago, but it played like Uncharted. Um, combat was okay, not the best, but not uh, too difficult either. Uh, I'm more of a mouse and keyboard type person, so controllers from the PlayStation, uh, I'm having to get used to again. Uh, uh, years ago, I became more of a PC gamer than console, but like I said a few minutes ago, with Stellar Blade coming out soon, and it's not going to be on a PC release, and I wanted to play it, I upgraded my PlayStation 5, so I started playing a little more PlayStation games. Some of them I've had for years and never finished, and this is one of them. But uh, anyway, the Survival Instinct button I thought was okay for a old guy like me but there was a little bit of issue with it I'll get into uh, later on in the video but uh, I didn't mind the survival instinct button but I'll get into more on that in a little bit the story was okay and I had some problems with it but I'll get into um, more of that in a little bit as well uh, here's some things that I didn't particularly care for with the game um, the odd colored ledges and things to make it it made it too easy to see where you go to next and this is where i think the survival instinct button would have been a better use uh maybe not to light up things so brightly but maybe point an arrow in a direction you needed to go or something instead of lighting up everything around you However, when it lit up things, it did make it easier for me to find some of the collectibles that were real hard, hard to see for somebody with the eyesight like mine. <laughs> uh, like the mushrooms and those little hanging things from the tr trees you had to shoot. Those were very difficult for me to spot, but uh, that the, the survival button did, the uh, instinct button did help out with that a little bit. Uh, so I have no shame admitting that, but as far as what paths to take or things like that, I think it uh, would have been better. There's some kind of arrow, almost like uh, Final Fantasy, the way you dig around and you chuck a bow for things. A little arrow would have been fine. I didn't like the way they had her talking to herself when you were looking around for what you needed to do to solve a puzzle or get through a tomb or something like that. I mean, you couldn't go five minutes in to trying to solve the puzzle and she was telling you what you needed to do. That was pretty annoying. I mean, I hate overcomplicated puzzles, but even I like some 
a little bit of a challenge on some puzzles and having a character talk to herself giving you hints uh, makes it too easy I didn't care for that the tomb puzzles they were a bit too easy it's and I attribute that to her giving herself hints it, uh, it just made the, the tombs, I didn't really get a sense of accomplishment in figuring out the puzzle because of how they had the hint set up. One thing that really also bothered me was the crew notes as the collectibles. It made no sense to me. Uh, her friends were in, as she's moving along, her friends had been there ahead of her. And with people hunting for them, you know, traps, bad weather, wild animals, and all that stuff. And her friends had time to jot down on a piece of paper their uh, apprehensions, their feelings, and all this stuff. And just happened to leave it laying on the ground for her to follow up and find later after coming after them. So it, those those uh, crew notes were pretty cringe to me. And uh, like I said, it just didn't didn't make no sense that they'd have the time to write something down like that like they did on them notes and then leave them for Laura to find uh, that collectible could have been done with something else or not even been in there at all it would have been fine another thing um, the men yelling out uh, just one girl she's kicking our asses and stuff like that that was pretty cringe uh, that uh, started sending up a red flag, and I'll explain that on a in a moment. But that was something very uh, annoying and almost feminist type bullshit dialogue uh, during the combat, and I didn't think it was necessary. And it sort of made the comment or the uh, combat kind of lackluster, uh, as far as or even the story writing kind of. It started overshadowing stuff at this point. We don't need to be told she kicks ass. We're playing her, of course she kicks ass. We don't need others telling us uh, that she kicks ass. <laughs> but that's bringing me up to a scene that I'm about to play. And let me set it up for you. It's when she goes to the ship to find Alex. The scene itself I thought was good. However, before that scene, you pick up one of those crew notes that Alex somehow had time to write before going down into the ship. And so uh, I'm going to play that scene and then I'll show you the crew note and tell you my thoughts on that. Oh, Alex. You got the tool. Finally. I impress you. Let's get you out of here. Oh, God. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, well, it looks like my dance career is over. <laughs> <laughs> too bad the scene was okay I mean I, th I thought it was all right uh, here is the crew note Lars totally right something seriously fucked up is going on here the natural phenomenon that causes the weather to go ape shit a military research base some kind of Sun Queen and a crazy cult I mean if I didn't know better I'd say this is a big put on a TV cameras hidden in the trees 
I mean, you know, I, I gotta admit, it's scaring the shit out of me. I, I keep cracking jokes to cover it up. Reyes looks ready to kick my ass. I think I need to do something useful before I completely lose it. I wish I could be more like Lara. She just... She blows me away. Not only is she brilliant, but she's also an amazing ass kicker. Now, if she didn't notice me before, she sure as hell won't now. But maybe I can still do something to get her attention. That right there, uh, that right there overshadows that last scene and turns it into garbage. Uh, that was the most adolescent writing in the whole game. There were other moments, but this one stands out over all the rest. The way she is described in Alex's eyes is almost godlike the way she kicks ass. That was cringe at its finest. Alex was just castrated here. No shred of manhood in him whatsoever. Again, we didn't need to be told how she kicks ass. We are playing her. Of course she kicks ass. Uh, this bit of writing was just awful. Uh, and that's putting it nicely. Um, the boss fights. The boss fights were okay. I faced harder. They still made me cuss a little, so that's good. But I did expect a few more bosses than, than just two. I don't consider Matthias as a boss fight in the end. It was just quick time events, which, you know, was pretty lackluster. And with everything going on in gaming with DEISG and all the feminism curse, this is not surprising, though, with some of this writing. It's very subtle compared to current day gaming. If I would have finished this game 10 years ago, I probably wouldn't have even thought anything about it other than it just being a little corny corny and immature however with what I know today the red flags are obvious now uh, now I can see it it's almost subliminal like they're just wanting to get these thoughts planted in your brain in a very um, covert sort of way it's, it's not so covert anymore in current gaming they don't try to hide their bullshit anymore they're just out in the open with it now that they've been busted uh, I think if they wouldn't have been busted, wouldn't have been found out, they would still continue their um, covert operation, so to speak, and subliminal mind messaging, getting thoughts like, like these things planted in your head. But they've been busted. They've been called out. They're being held accountable for their bullshit, which is good. Um, you know, they're they can't hide their bullshit any longer and it's costing them millions of dollars in losses and that is okay that is okay with me uh, now finally the, the the game the gameplay overall was fun even if it was a bit too easy the covert messaging was bullshit and it sucked detracting from the story was this a Laura Croft story though and Laura Croft is not a little bird to anybody. So I say no. It should not have been classified as a Laura Croft story. Laura Croft already had an origin. It didn't need a reboot. Not in my opinion. As a standalone story though, it could have been good if it weren't for all the feminism bits and pieces in it the story in my opinion could have been set in the Tomb Raider universe maybe would have been better to write it as a distant cousin or some unrelated archaeology student on her first outing with her only ties to Laura Croft being an admirer or maybe even uh, seeing the real Laura Croft give a speech or something to inspire her to get into the archaeology career field. But n I never felt that it was Laura Croft. With another reboot coming to Crystal Dynamics Unified Laura, I had wanted to 
finish this and in my conclusion whatever Crystal Dynamics puts out in their new reboot which I don't think there needs to be another reboot I just can't shake the feeling it will be a lot worse than Rise of the Tomb Raider given the current state of gaming today but that's it those are my opinions and thoughts on this 10 year old game that took me 10 years to finally finish but thanks for watching be sure to like comment subscribe or even dislike it if you don't like it i don't care and i will catch you next video